Hello beautiful souls! Welcome back to another video on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny and today I want to talk about um, actually a requested video and this is about Inner Earth. So Inner Earth, also known as Agartha, the world within the earth. So this is definitely um, something that has been talked about by ancient civilizations throughout history, throughout all of time. And there are also a lot of documentaries that you can watch about this. And, um, and they really put together like the historical facts plus the hints that we can see today. So at this point, when I got this video request, all that I knew was what I had also seen in like documentaries and heard other spiritual teachers talk about, but I didn't have my own experience with it. And so what I decided to do was, of course, head to the Galactic Federation of Light and see if I could get some answers. And so I'm gonna let you know everything that I found out and didn't find out, and even draw a picture of what information I received. But before we jump too deeply into this, I just wanna remind you to please give this video a thumbs up if you like it, share this video and then make sure that you're subscribed because new videos go live every Sunday, Monday, Wednesday and I appreciate your support so much. So let's first talk about what you can already find out there on the internet and so I'm going to pop up a little map here of the inner world of Agartha that you can easily find and what you're going to see is that the entrances into this world are at the poles so the North Pole, South Pole but then they also look as though there are entrances at special sites, like within really deep caves around the world, as well as large mountains underneath these large mountains. One of the most well-known sites that people talk about is Mount Shasta in California. So what I will say on this is that there is a lot of cover-up about the North and the South Poles when it comes to the government and the military. Whenever somebody tries to go there, they always get, um, they always either disappear or they get escorted away. So um, I can't remember the name of the documentary. If I can think of it, I'll put it on the screen for you. But I was watching a documentary where they actually tried to go to the North Pole to see because they had heard that there was an opening there into this inner earth world. And they were filming the entire experience and there was quite a few, like there was a whole team of scientists and um, adventure people and doctors and stuff. And when they found the opening, they were detained for weeks. Um, and when they returned, none of them would speak about it. And so the person like doing the documentary or filming the documentary couldn't even get the, the people that had been taken and detained to explain what had happened. Were they in trouble? Did they see anything? They were just like, blank faced fear and not willing to talk about it like they had been threatened. So it does make you wonder. It really does. So if you're interested in this um, kind of topic, you know, really search around for those documentaries. You'd be surprised how many people have actually tried. Um, and then some people that claim to have been there kind of before like social media, before documentaries and all of that, like in the early 1900s. Um, there were books written about what they saw there and that's where a lot of this um, information comes from is from the books that they wrote about what they saw in the earth like they actually ventured into the center of the earth and then have these stories about what they saw there so you kind of have to just decide for yourself you know after get, gathering up as much information as you can what you believe something will either resonate with you or it won't for me personally, I've always been really interested in this topic and I always did feel like there was something being covered up. Like something definitely there at the, at the level of another disclosure, right? So I believe the government already knows about extraterrestrial life, of course, and aliens. They have seen them, you know, communicated with them, all of this, and even had them, you know, visiting Earth at different times. And this is exactly in that same thread where I do believe that it's well known, especially with the militaries and the governments and not just um, one country, but I believe that there are many countries that know about this, including like China and all of that. Um, 
so I just think that it's being covered up, right? To keep it from the public, just like alien life is being covered up. But we know better and we have our own connections and we can do our own sleuthing. Um, so again, like it, it can sound like a conspiracy theory or it can sound pretty reasonable that a government would cover something like that up so that people don't try to go there, probably main reason, um, or get like, freaked out and have like a wave of panic over society. So a lot of people have reported seeing small ships entering and exiting um, through these poles, uh, the North and the South Pole, and they've even talked about them coming out of the water there. So either going into like a, a large, apparently it's quite a huge hole in the ground. And like also, sorry, just another side note, apparently like the satellites that map the earth like google earth and all of that just conveniently don't go over those areas right so that you can't see so that's also kind of interesting um but yes there's definitely been sightings of small craft disc shaped craft entering and exiting through the main entrances which are the poles so when i went to the galactic federation of light about this um I, I received like kind of an image and I think that the best way for me to describe what I believe is happening in the center of the earth is for me to try to just draw it for you roughly and then we're going to talk about some of the details of life there. Okay, so disclaimer guys, I don't claim to be any kind of an artist. If you want me to write you a poem, sing you a song, I'm there, but this is definitely not my strength. But anyway, so here's what I saw. Um, with my vision from the Galactic Federation of Light. So this is the outside of Earth. And then within that would be Earth's crust. And this is, imagine the scale being that this is the furthest that anyone has ever been able to dig. They've never breached this, nothing, no drill, nothing has ever been able to go that deep before. So this is like very vast, but for scale, this is what it looks like. So um, then you have little people, tiny little people living all the way around, upside down person here on the other part of the world. So people all the way around. Within Earth, would be a similar shaped world where you would also have little people living all the way around. So a lot of people that are describing Agartha are seeing it as you're going in and it's flat. But what I saw is that it's actually a reflection of the earth that we're on by being a mini globe and having the same kind of gravitational force and pull. So if this is um, where this arrow conveniently is could be like an entry point. So that could be like the North Pole I'll Just right North Pole and then this could be South Pole and Then you've got other potential entry spots at like sacred sites mountains deep caves whatever all around the world, right? so this space is their atmosphere or their sky, the atmosphere and the sky of Agartha. So in order to traverse from the earth to here, you would need a method of transportation. And so that's why it makes sense that people are seeing like these little disc shaped ships going and flying this way, going in, flying through the poles or these different mountains and things, because how else would they get from here to here? right? Um, but these alien beings are not the original like inhabitants of Agartha. They would have their own indigenous people. So how did they travel, right? So we'll talk about that in a sec. But what I saw was like a beautiful globe, just like Earth. So there would be um, islands, um, pieces of land, and then in between water, again, just like Earth. So the difference here is that this is a tropical 
environment, tropical temps, and very warm. And there is like, it's very lush, it's very green, the plants are huge, um, and the waters are warm, and there's different kinds of animal life there, different kinds of plant life, but still originated on Earth, right? So how did the original inhabitants end up here? How does life begin anywhere? How do they end up on the outer Earth? Same way they would end up on the inner Earth. So we all know that the Earth is always rotating. Um, and what, what we don't know is does this also rotate? And it would make sense that it does. I feel like maybe it is just a reflection of Earth. So what I think is that all of these alien style beings that we've heard of being found in inner earth like a lot of people have talked about reptilians um, greys um, some people even say that that the lemurian people are here they would all be visitors because they're not the original inhabitants they aren't the original indigenous people and what i saw for the original people that like own this or this is their homeland is that they are actually um a lot larger than we are on the outer surface because of the environment and the amount of like oxygen and different gases like it would be a different atmosphere and environment here and what it's created is like much larger animal life much larger plant life and very tall indigenous beings obviously not to scale or he could walk around that in a day <laughs> whereas it would still be like a whole world right um, and these indigenous beings are like twice as tall as a human and are like very spiritual, very sacred and all about um, connecting with the earth, their earth and the energies and the plant life and, and living in that wholeness with, um, with the energies of their world. So what they would think of like the surface dwellers would be like that we are polluting our world and they would be like baffled by how we could do something like that to our mother right because it is their mother as well but there's that amazing amount of respect and like understanding for how we are all connected and we just you know not you not us this community but humanity doesn't have that kind of respect towards gaia and that is something that is key in this society. So they work with the um, planet and the energies. Um, so this, I've always known that Gaia had a crystal core. So they would have like a lot of, this is crystals. <laughs> they would have a lot of crystal energy to power things, right? So there's a huge amount of power that comes from the crystals in the center of the earth. So they would be able to power things for them. So that's some kind of power field. And they would be able to like build communities and their societies from the power of these crystals. Now I've also heard of certain crystals, especially in caves, having a luminosity. So that would be um, like a light source for them as well, like a, a glowing crystal core. So it could potentially glow but it would definitely be able to power things for them. Now, another thing that I saw um, was that their plant life, a lot of their plant life, was also bioluminescent. So um, you would be able to like see at night because you'd have all these dotted lights like stars, but bioluminescence can be like blues and greens and yellows and, and different colors of these plants that would glow at night um, for like seeing at night and how beautiful would that be and then they've got this crystal core for their power and their energy and then they've got the waters it's like islands like beautiful islands very similar to Lemuria when I looked at it because in Lemuria like the plant life was huge the leaves were huge the animals were enormous dinosaur sized animals um, and the people are much taller much taller so maybe that's why people think Lemurians moved here. It would definitely be an environment that suited them. Um, but I think this is actually a world of the indigenous inner earth Agarthians, if we believe that it's called Agartha, and that they would have their own 
society and beings and that any of these aliens reptilians greys government officials any of that that we hear going there they would be visitors and this would not be somewhere where they would live this would be somewhere where they would maybe be able to stay and visit but it's not their home like that's not where they come from not if they're galactic now some people argue that reptilians um, were the original inhabitants of earth and if that's the case and maybe they would be more welcome but i do believe that this is run by these indigenous agarthians and that they would have say on what happened and so maybe they don't want people to know that they exist maybe they are the reason for the secrecy can you not understand that i can definitely understand that um, who wants a bunch of like surface dweller polluters coming into their world, right? So the tropical temperatures, the very large indigenous beings who are very connected with like the land and the plants and the forests and the water, the bioluminescence of the flora and fauna, and the really large animals, all of that really gave me an avatar vibe. Have you seen the movie Avatar? It's so similar in a lot of different ways. Um, they were very tall uh, and lived with like the forces and the cycles of their forests and trees. And they had like a power source that was, in that movie it was the tree roots. But in their case, I think that it would be these huge crystals that would be able to power their world whatever they really even needed power for, if they even really needed it, if they were kind of living kind of more in line with the land. And so I can certainly understand why they wouldn't want to share this world with a population of humanity that has proven um, with a track record to only pollute and ruin environments. So the kinds of things that I ha had me asking questions was, if it's a globe within a globe and there's a huge amount of space, sky, for them it would be their sky in between, then travel could only be possible through flight. And since they are not galactic beings with ships, how do they travel? Because we've definitely heard of these inner world people venturing out, popping out, and communicating, especially back in olden ancient times. There are these stories of them popping out and trying to help humanity understand how important it was to be good to the earth that seems to be their main message which is so beautiful so when i wondered about that the image that i got was of these huge flying um really large winged animals that they would use like horses to go places again i didn't even click together that this is all so similar to avatar now the ones that I saw seemed more like wing feathered winged beings than they did like the dragon style beings that were in Avatar. But either way, like it's very similar. And they could use them to travel outwards to one of the openings. So if there's multiple openings around the crust of the earth to get in um, safely and avoid all of that like magma lava situation that's in the crust of the earth, if there were these channels where that was like a clear way in, then they would be able to also exit too, right? If you can enter, then you can exit. And maybe they could visit back in ancient times because there were also alien visitors back then too. Um, things were a lot more open at the time on Earth. It wasn't so locked down. Whereas now we're in a time where the 3D construct has us locked in, right? Where there are um, beings in control of the 3D construct that don't want us connecting with higher beings. And they're stopping any kind of like disclosure or the higher being extraterrestrials from coming and talking with us and explaining things. And a lot of that control started happening around ancient Egypt because they came down and helped with like the pyramids and um, a lot of teachings and different things like that. But then you really don't hear of alien visitors past that time. So I feel like something happened around that time where a certain group took control of the planet and stopped a lot of those visits from happening. And so that's also when it seems like 
the story stopped with these inner earth beings. I mean, there are always exceptions to the rule, but hopefully um, that this is something that can happen in the future, that, that we can meet them and understand. They probably have so much that they could teach us about taking care of a planet and free energy but I mean, obviously, if they tried to pop up now, it would be like they would not be able to blend in in any way. It would be very obvious, you know, they're much larger and they definitely would have different features than we have. I would assume that their eyes would be different because they're in in that like darker world. So they probably have either much larger eyes or very different style of pupils, larger so that they can take in more light so that it seems like day for them. But an interesting word that came up when I was like kind of dry, trying to dive in and understand this world um, and tap into like whatever information I could get with the Galactic Federation of Light, which wasn't a lot, by the way, it kind of seemed like it was blocked, like that, that I wasn't really supposed to know or see too much. And just like a general idea because when I probed for more information on certain areas like nothing came through just blank like no information allowed to come through and I tried multiple times because there were a few things that bothered me about having a world within a world like it making sense specifically if they have huge plant life huge like the leaves were huge these huge beings humans inner earth beings and these huge crazy large animals all living there then they have to have some kind of like sun or source that the plants and everybody could use to grow like i don't know like how would that be possible for them to have a sun inside the earth like i don't see how that's possible i know that there's that huge expanse of atmosphere and sky but we have a sun because we're in, maybe I'm, maybe I'm limiting myself by thinking this way, but we have a sun because we live in space, like our planet is free in space. And so there are stars and suns and moons and everything for us to experience. Inside earth, what's in there? Other than the crystals, which might glow, or the bioluminescent plants, the flora and fauna. But other than that, what is their light source what is their light source how do they see how do things grow do they not need one is it different like that i couldn't really understand and when i kept asking like do they have a sun i felt like they had something like a light source above um that actually like circled that inner globe so that it would be like day and night at different times but what that source of light is i couldn't understand like a ball of gas that burned I, I mean, that is what a sun is, I guess, but I don't know, how could that, I don't think, because I, because I can't wrap my human mind around it, I can't figure it out, and then because I feel like there was no visions for me when I asked about it, they showed me nothing, so I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe we're not supposed to know all of this, right? The whole, the whole world, the whole Agartha inner world just feels shrouded in mystery because of all the conspiracies and the cover-ups and the hiding of the entryways. And I don't know, it, but it really strongly gave me Avatar vibes, which made me wonder. So James Cameron is like definitely an elitist. He's at the top of the top. He's one of the richest people. There would be like much more opportunities for someone like him to see this kind of a world, to travel there. Because if we know that like government officials are going there from different countries to see it and understand it, and they also, you know, get to, to meet with different extraterrestrial beings as well, because they're in these places of power and secrecy. So if someone like James Cameron was able to go and see this inner world, and then he creates a movie about it, because I mean, really, where else did all of those ideas come from? Like, imagination is a really powerful thing, but that was really specific. And after like seeing this inner world and how similar it was, it got me thinking like, wait a minute, like, did he get his ideas from there? Or is that a coincidence? Which also makes me wonder about Star Wars, 
because Star Wars is really similar to a lot of um, what's happening in Orion and in the Orion constellation. There is a riot of different beings that live there, really similar to Star Wars. So I don't know, maybe George Lucas also had like a peek into these um, undisclosed worlds because he also did E.T., right? So it's gotta make you wonder. I know people can just have amazing creative imaginations, but when things are so similar and so linked, like the battles of Orion are compared to Star Wars all the time, all the time. By anyone that has a connection with Orion, they see that huge amount of similarity. And even not just with the themes of like the light versus the dark or the shadow, um, but also with like the different kinds of beings there, like in the cantina scene with all of those different mixed kinds of extraterrestrials. That's like many, many places on Orion. It is really mixed up there. There's lots of different kinds of beings there. So I do feel like a lot of the information was kind of like held back. Um, and I, like any of my really specific questions, like nothing was coming through for some reason. And that doesn't really happen like with other stuff. If I ask something, then I usually get like a pretty good explanation of even stuff I don't know anything about, right? It still comes through with like a really good like explanation plus visuals so that I can understand and like, you know, teach about it or put it in the reading or whatever, whoever the information is for. So I thought it was really strange that that wasn't flowing for me for this topic. And I tried multiple times. It wasn't just like one, you know, bad session. So it's like I said, it feels shrouded in mystery. Um, one one word came through and I don't know what it means, but it was minkite, that the people there would be called minkite, M-I-N-K-I-T-E. Because when I was being shown the people and what they look like, um, and like I said, really similar to Avatar in the height and in the indigenous qualities, um, and in that deep wisdom and having their own language, but they were not blue and they were certainly not feline like they are in Avatar either. They were like humanoid for sure. Um, but then the word minkite came through, like they were minkite people. And I've never heard that before. And it didn't, it didn't like strike any resonance for me other than it, it sounded like it fit those people like when I'm looking at them and then that word comes through I mean and it feels like it goes together minkite so I don't know I also tried looking up that word to see if I could get any additional info like googled the crap out of it there's nothing there's just nothing so what do you all think about this so this would definitely push any flat earthers right out of this conversation. They would not be interested. I've never believed in a flat earth though. I've always believed, I mean, you know what? Anything is possible. So you can't really say that it's not possible because how many timelines do we have where there are all these um, differences? And we do say like anything that can be is probably happening somewhere in the universe. But for me, the information that I've always felt is that it is a globe and that there is this world within. And that is where all of the stories come from. Like if you're seeing stories about inner earth coming from multiple different kinds of ancient societies, just like they did with aliens, it's coming from somewhere. There is some truth to that. And, you know, having something like, you know, the pyramids being built in all of these different areas around the world, yet they all line up in the same kinds of ways. It's like, you can't ignore that kind of stuff, right? So there are definitely ancient connections to their being an inner earth and possibly these Minkite people. So I do believe, I'm a believer. So there you have it. I believe in inner earth. Um, I don't know if the term Agartha is correct, I just know that there is an inner world inside our globe with these beautiful Minkite beings that are so connected with the heart of our planet and have so much that they could teach us and I hope that we get to meet them one day. And other than that, I turn this over to you. Please let me know what you think. Have you had personal experiences with your meditations or tuning in where you have any additional information that you can add? 
Have you seen any of the documentaries that I described about people trying to go there and being like um, detained, turned away, you know, not being able to go and all of the conspiracies that cover up the entryways into inner earth or, or any other thoughts that you have, please share them below. But it's definitely a cool topic to cover. And I wish that I had more details for you but at least you can get an overview of what that kind of world looks like, what the people are like, um, and how it kind of is formed within our earth. So please remember to like this video, give it a thumbs up, share this video, and be subscribed. And then if you are interested in having a reading done to reveal your past or parallel lives, or you wanna meet your spirit guides and spirit team, um, or if you want to have a spiritual and personal breakthrough or a healing session, there are so many services that I have going right now. Please check out the links in the description for my website and my different services and see if anything stands out with you. And I'd be more than happy to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. So before we go for the day, please remember, listen to your heart and the quiet voice within because you are so much more than the body you are in. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. Bye.